Hi guys, welcome back to The College Hustle. My name is Madison Mayfield and I'm back for another episode. If you haven't already, go back and in the description box you can find my first video. It's quite informative. Today we are going to get into a few more details of how exactly to turn your artwork into prints. Um, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that I've learned over the past three, four years and hopefully you'll be able to learn from some of the mistakes that I've made. So let's get started. I'm just going to talk you through step by step what I am doing right now for a collection that I'm about to release. This particular collection is going to a cute little boutique in Oxford, Mississippi, and all my original pieces will be going there. It's the first time that I've done this, so I'm also learning as I'm going. I created this collection. It's um, 25 butterflies, and I spent about 65 hours um, painting the actual butterflies. Something that I want to do to utilize um, all the work that I put in is to create prints out of them, and that way I can make my money back twice. Um, I've sold the whole collection as a wholesale to the brick and mortar store and now um, I did am going through the process of digitizing everything and then I will put it on my website and people will be able to find and purchase them from there. Once you've cleaned up all the edges by hand um, we are going to photograph it. Uh, there actually are several ways to create prints and so one of them is to scan it. Um, you do need a high quality scanner or sometimes you can go in to um, a business and have them scan it for you. And the other option to, dig to digitize it is to take photographs of it. One little tip that I learned early on is when you are photographing your piece it's helpful to grab one of those microfiber um, rags and wipe off the lens of your camera and then that gets rid of any dust and then it's less work in Photoshop for you to fix all those little dust specks. And so you are going to photograph your work, um, try and do it as straight as possible um, so there's no weird angles and something to look for is glare, um, which is why a lot of people do opt to have their work professionally photographed. It's really difficult um, to get that natural light and make it beautiful but also not have that glare there. And so once you figure out all those pieces, you'll take your photograph and you will upload it onto your computer. Um, I highly recommend all the Adobe suites. I work primarily in Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, it is quite an expense. I think for students it's about $29 a month and maybe $59, $50 a month if you're not a student somewhere in there. Um, it is uh, one of my main expenses, but I haven't found any other program that works as well. And so you can import your photograph into Photoshop and you can fix up all those little mistakes, all the little dust pieces, um, clean up the edges, brighten up the colors, whatever you would like to do. And then um, I typically transport it into Adobe Illustrator and from there I make it into a vector. And what's so neat about a vector image is that you can um, size it down to something super small to put on your business card or blow it up to something to put on a billboard and it will not the quality will not be affected. All right you guys I'm going to show you a super quick tutorial on how I digitize my artwork and make prints out of them on Adobe Illustrator. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to click file place and that will allow you to place an image uh, of your artwork into your artboard. Once your image is inside of your artboard, I typically crop it down. Now you're just going to click the crop image button and crop in any excess things on the outside that don't need to be there. After you have cropped your image, you're going to click the apply button, which will apply the crop. After that, select your image and you're going to click image trace. Don't be afraid when your artwork changes to black and white. All you're going to do is go down and click the image trace panel button. And from there, you're going to switch the mode from black and white to color. It will take a minute and it will change your artwork from black and white to color. From there, you can kind of mess around with the settings. You can do a limited color palette or uh, whatever other options they have. You can mess around with the pathways. Um, totally up to personal preference, and I'd recommend that you explore that and find out what's best for your artwork. After it's changed to color, I typically go from a limited palette to a full tone palette, 
Um, I just feel like it looks a little bit more true to life. Okay, once that has happened, you're gonna select your image and you're gonna click the expand button. This is gonna break it up into all these little pieces um, separated by color. And then you'll click object, ungroup, and um, now you can delete all of this white in the background that we don't want in our art prints. And so this will take a minute, but you can just go around, highlight, delete as much as possible. And then once you've done that, you need to gonna go in, zoom in and get rid of the ones close to your image. Then see, once it gets close, you'll just go in and delete all these individual tiny little pieces all the way around your artwork. If you make a mistake, just click Command Z and it will pop right back, nothing to worry about. Once you're finished at the end of doing all this deleting, getting rid of all this white space, um, what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna select everything again and click Object Group and that will make it one big piece. And then here, I've already done it, you can see the final product is the butterfly. And without any of the other stuff in the background, she looks beautiful and just like she does in real life. And um, the cool part about this, like I mentioned earlier, is that you can uh, use a scale tool. Here I've sized it down, but I'll just show you how to do it real quick. So select your object, click the scale tool, and then hold down shift and you can size it up or down for whatever your needs are. And something that's really fun, like for example, with this butterfly collection is that I will be using them to create prints, but since I fell in love with them so much, I think that I wanna throw one on my business card. And so at this point, I um, can create different documents for my business card and then you use that same work and size it down and create business cards or stickers or whatever I'd like for my business to kind of create brand consistency. And so I uh, will send it into my printer. I personally use one online. You can also find one um, local, more like brick and mortar, where you can go in and have a dialogue with the person as opposed to over the phone, which can, can be quite useful. Up to you, um, do your research, whatever works best. And then you will pick a paper type or a canvas. You can really print on just about anything. There's so many different kinds of um, material from like something textured like watercolor paper or something gloss or matte or whatever you like. So do your research, find the best paper type for you and for your product and then you will place an order. And something that I recommend, especially when you're starting out, is to do more of a pre-order or a made-to-order model. And by doing this you um, avoid putting in a big order with your printer and spending a bunch of money and then having prints sit in your kitchen or your studio or wherever if they don't sell and then you're out of a lot of money. So I would suggest at least to start off with that you uh, look into doing a made to order or a pre-order thing and then you know your exact numbers and you're guaranteed to make a little bit more money or at least not waste as much. And so I um, then I started off on Etsy and then now I've bumped up to Squarespace. Um, it's another expense. I think I spend, I do the yearly, which is like 300 and something dollars a year, which is quite hefty. And so because we're investing in our business with Adobe and we're investing in our business with Squarespace, we want to do the research and watch these videos to make our money back for us. So it's worth it if you're going to put in the work and make the money back. So I... Um, I set it up on Squarespace. I just think it looks really professional. Sometimes what I do is I throw my artwork into mock-ups, which is something that you can do on Photoshop, and then you can see what your artwork would look like in different frame types and in different sizes. And it's an easy way to create Instagram posts. Um, you can find some on my Instagram as examples, and um, you can buy them online or you can find free ones. I think you can buy some mock-ups on Etsy as well for a low price. And once we set it all up on our website, then the last thing left to do is promotion. I work 
almost exclusively through social media, so mostly Instagram and Facebook. It is a little bit scary because I'm so dependent on these apps, and so something that I'm currently looking into exploring and building is an email list, um, something that I've heard a lot about and something I'm doing more research on, but it just gives me more of a direct line of communication to my customers. And so something I'm doing with this collection for the first time that I haven't done for anything else is I will send it out to my email list before I post about it on Instagram and kind of create more of a demand, hopefully. And um, once it's on the website, it's kind of out in the real world, I'll share it on everything and then go from there. So the last thing that you do once your prints are sold off of your website is you need to ship them. And this is something that I would recommend doing some research up front in. And there are several different websites that offer bulk shipping. Um, one that I suggest is called Uline, just the letter U line. And uh, you're able to order boxes or envelopes or whatever you need. Um, those mailing tubes, if you're printing something large and flat, um, and you can order in bulk and usually get a nice discount. So something that we want to make sure with your work is that you seal it in plastic and you just have to make sure that no water can get in there anywhere because it will distort um, the work that you work so hard for and then you'll be out money trying to send someone uh, it again. So I've made that mistake. Make sure that you get a plastic liner or whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that you package right. It has to get to your customer safely and you have to do everything on your end to help USPS or UPS or FedEx or however you're sending because you just can't really trust any of them. So make sure you buy the high quality mailers and envelopes or tubes and um, make sure that no water can get in there. And then some things you also have to think about is if you're shipping international or to somewhere humid, you might have to take extra measures. There's a bunch of videos and resources and blogs um, that you can look up depending on the type of product that you would like to ship. And I would just definitely recommend doing your research beforehand um, and then buying in bulk can save a lot of money, which is also nice when we go back to our pre-order or made to order numbers, you know two weeks before you have to ship what your numbers are. So then you can order the exact number of prints and the exact number of boxes or tubes and then you're not wasting your precious money. <laughs> and so, um, get those prints and then in the mail and something that I highly recommend is always send the tracking number typically via email to your customers. Um, it just removes a huge headache when someone's saying, where's my package? Is it lost? You can plug it that tracking number right in. The responsibility is off of you if the postal service is taking a long time. Um, but if you don't have that number, it's kind of a shot in the dark no one knows where the package is so make sure you keep track of that and make sure you communicate that well to your customer okay and my last bit of advice is to stick with it and don't quit um, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes I know I have I've wasted time and money but when you view it as a waste it this whole process becomes very frustrating and aggravating and you're wondering why your Instagram's not growing and why people aren't buying anything from you and so I would encourage you to look at everything as a learning opportunity every mistake that you've made every file that you saved wrong or time when it, your art print didn't come back from the printers correctly just learn as much as you can about Adobe Illustrator. Learn as much as you can about the printing process. Learn as much as you can about wholesale and retail and Squarespace and all of these different things. And I have been on Instagram with my art account for three years and I've only just now hit a thousand followers. And so there is value in being in the middle and there's value in the growth and sometimes it just takes a long time. And that's okay because we're learning a lot along the way and we're only gonna be better for it in the end. So don't get discouraged, stick with it. Your artistic ability will improve over time. Um, you'll gain knowledge um, through this video and through following other like-minded people. And so everything is, culminating into this beautiful process where we will get there, we will get to the end game, and I would just encourage you to don't quit, hang on, and enjoy the ride. All right, thank you so much to the College Hustle for having me, and um, I hope that you all learned a thing or two. Um, you can find me on Instagram, you can find the College Hustle on Instagram, and keep investing in yourself, and we will see you again soon.